it is also evident building in web3 is not cheap it's costly it's costly it's a costly yeah. business okay yeah. um and and that too after seeing lot of founders around us i personally live very optimistic life i live very low life where i don't go with all of those fancy ferraris lambo or whatever driving here mm-hmm. and there but there are multiple folks who kind of do it into this space and that creates a different image all together for the founders of mm-hmm. the web3 into the other people who are aspiring to become yeah so just to not to buy lambo or something but to kind of have enough fund yeah uh, to go and build what i am more passionate about yeah. what are the advices you will give because i can imagine you guys must if you guys must have raised some funds mm-hmm. and if you have raised that or in in your previous uh, journey as well what was the few thing or few thing which a founder should keep in mind going for any kind of funding round into the future yeah i would say that it definitely depends on the market that you're raising in i would say this current market is one of the most difficult environments that we have seen um so i i was just talking to a founder earlier today and i was saying you know i've been in crypto for a little while now and um the first massive bear market around 2018 2019 time frame it was worse in the sense that we didn't even know if this industry was going to survive um a lot of people held their treasuries in eth uh so we all know how that went and the projects died off and and we didn't know whether liquidity was going to come into this the system altcoins at that point were just you know it was a very dirty term and now I mean we have a long tail of coins so it was worse back then because it was more of an existential problem I, i would say when you are fundraising a few things to keep in mind first and foremost hold your nerve because I think that sometimes when people hear criticism from VCs or they hear questions from VCs that kind of make it clear that person didn't quite understand what it is you're building, you take it pretty hard because you have sacrificed so much and you have worked so hard and put in so much time into this project and it doesn't seem like people are are really understanding it or are getting into it and that can be just emotionally very difficult but you know rely on your team at that point definitely have faith in yourself and hold your nerve. I would encourage people first and foremost to hold their nerve through a fundraising process. I would also say, you know, understand that a fundraising process is meant to be difficult. So, it could be the case that you are a hot project and, you know, A16Z is throwing money your way and uh, I mean, it's not happening in this cycle, but let's just say in a, in a bull cycle, you hear stories about these fundraisers that get done very, very quickly. Everyone wants in and and you think to yourself, well, if I were a good enough founder, that would happen to me. That's not true. the vast majority of fundraisers are meant to be difficult they are meant to be difficult you are asking somebody to entrust their capital with you and web3 is not cheap uh, so you're asking them to entrust a good amount of money with you um so of course it's meant to be a difficult process i would just set expectations right with yourself uh in terms of how this you know period is going to run while you are fundraising The third thing I would say is, you know, investors, you have to understand that they see a lot. You know, every day let's say they have anywhere from 5 to 10 meetings with completely different projects. So, you are in your project 24/7. Um, so you know all the details. You know everything about your space. The person that you're talking to on the other end, they're a really smart person, but they they aren't spending the same amount of time. So a lot of things you're going to have to spell out for them. Um, so I would say that you should treat your fundraising conversations like conversations where you know there's a back and forth about what this industry is all about, what is it that you're building, what is its position within this industry, and so I would treat it as a sort of collaborative thing with with whatever investor you're pitching to. And then the the fourth thing, which is I'll probably stop there this long enough list the fourth thing is you should really be on the lookout for investors that understand you quite well so i would say that web3 investing despite the fact that it has matured a lot and there's a lot more capital in the space and there are a lot more expectations from lps it is still very different from web2 so web2 fundraising it's very uh, structured let's say Um so you know you do the initial pitch there's an expectation that there's a deck there there's going to be some data room that has all of your documentation perhaps all of your contracts your offer letters um your cap tables etc all of that's going to be in that data room and the VC is going to take its time going through the diligence process web3 is different so deals can take a little longer to get done but by and large you should feel that chemistry very early on So within the first two calls you as a founder you should have a sense like do I get along with this person do they seem to understand what it is that we're building are they enthusiastic about it if you don't feel that chemistry move on it's like dating move on 
<laughs> don't get tested. And honestly, I think it not only is sort of the most emotionally healthy way to approach it, but also probably the most accurate way to approach it. You really want to look for those investors who will go to bad for you. And uh, that means in good times, they make all the introductions in the world. Uh, they participate in your you know, your hackathons, let's say, um, as judges, or, you know, they'll be open to introductions from you when you have projects to introduce to them. And in bad times, I mean, they will support you um, should anything happen to the project. So those are the investors that you're looking for regardless. But I would say those are some things to keep in mind. Um, but first and foremost, though, a lot can happen in a bear market. When everyone is 99% down, a lot can happen.